Now, the thing that you want is for the covariance matrix to work well with matrix algebra. Indeed, it does. We're going to think back to when we computed the expectation and the variance of a sum of two random variables, and we're going to lift those results to arbitrary dimensions, thinking in terms of linear transformations and what these do to expectation and covariance matrices. So let's say that you're given n random variables, x1 through xn, put it together into a vector x with expectation e of x and covariance matrix v of x. Now, let's say that we have a linear transformation, a matrix A, and we take linear combinations of these x variables and call them y variables, stack them into a random vector y that is given as a times x. Then I claim that the expectation and covariance matrix of y behave nicely. That is, the expectation of y is a times the expectation of x. And the covariance matrix of y is what you get from the covariance matrix of x by multiplying on the left by a and on the right by a transpose. Now you should check that this makes sense and agrees with the simpler results when we just had two random variables where we showed that expectation was linear in that combination and covariance was quadratic when you start changing random variables. This is what that looks like when you're in arbitrary dimensions. Now, you could, you could prove this. We're not going to do so. Instead, what I want to do is show how these results are useful and give really practical information. So let's do so in the context of an example. Here's an example that I think is a lot of fun. It's a little counterintuitive. Let's say you're given two independent random variables, x1 and x2. Now consider what happens when you take their sum, x1 plus x2, and their difference, x1 minus x2. And the question is, are these two random variables also independent, or do they depend on one another? Hmm, what do you think? It's not so obvious. But it is easy if we do a little bit of linear algebra. So instead of computing the covariances directly, let's take x1 and x2, pack them into a random variable x. Let's take x1 plus x2 and x1 minus x2 and call them y1 and y2. And we're going to represent y as the matrix 1, 1, 1, negative 1 times x. Now that we've written it that way, it becomes very simple to compute the covariance matrix associated to y. Now, how do we do that? Well, according to the formula that we just went over, the covariance matrix of y is this matrix A times the covariance matrix of x times this matrix transpose. But that's the same matrix. We know, we know that since x1 and x2 are independent, then the covariance matrix for x is diagonal, and the diagonal entries are the variance of x1 and x2. So what happens when we multiply this out? Well, we do so, and surprise, we do not get a diagonal matrix. That means that these combinations are, in general, not independent. But, but, if we have the originals having the exact same variance, if v of x1 equals v of x2, then this is a diagonal matrix. And in that case, these two combined random variables are independent. Did you, did you guess that? Was that obvious? No, it was not obvious. But it was easy, given a bit of matrix algebra.